All right, so welcome to the very first episode of our Value First podcast. And in this episode, we're going to talk about why in projects, uh, managers bullshit about their critical values. So why do they bullshit about critical values? Do you have any idea? It's part of the culture. What Everybody culture? does it. What culture? Well, a bad culture created by business schools, primarily, who don't teach the managers anything better. And the managers think that's the way they have to speak. You know, we have extremely agile organizations <laughs> through digitalization. Yes. Okay. And then what happens? So, so, I mean, we hear this all the time, right? We're all around the world, different cultures. You, you hear it all the time. You, you hear, hear it all, all the time. time. We yeah. hear it all the time. Yeah. But, but you hear it in your culture, but we are all over the world. And it's not like a Norwegian culture or a British culture or an American culture or an Indian culture. It's a worldwide absolutely worldwide culture yeah. and and i mean the amount of bullshit the level of bullshit we we count it it's like close to 100 percent. right okay. very difficult to find anything clear because they don't know how to do it right so what what, what what you mean with that is sometimes we do um, uh, specification quality control mm -hmm. top level top manager you know for for projects with several hundred million dollar type projects and what do we find? Bullshit. Bullshit, right? And, and, and then what happens is, who reacts to this bullshit? Nobody. Nobody reacts to it, right? Because they uh, understand it in their own particular way. And everybody in the organization <laughs> understands it in a different way. And so they all start the project fighting each other, doing different things that they think is the correct understanding of the ambiguous bullshit. Incredible. I think, Kai, you found that uh, Agile projects had a failure, total failure rate of 62% once. Well, that was, uh, the f uh, that was the nice numbers. Okay, yeah. those were. And, and the, the waterfall projects are even worse. Yeah. Right? So, so we might pet ourselves on the back, say, oh, Agile projects are, are better than waterfall projects, but we're talking enormous amounts of failure. And then... Uh, That's normal. Uh, you know, with a uh, waterfall projects, and then a little better, but mm. still an enormous amount of failure. Mm. What what's the type of uh, bullshit level specifications you you can remember sort of run into? Well, you, you've all seen them. Uh, the first thing is they're all words, no numbers. Okay, that's that's the first sign. If it's pure words, it's probably pure bullshit. And there are words like enhanced, increased, improved, and then some nice sounding noun like effectiveness, cooperation, initiative. And, uh, you uh, can't uh, make this yeah. stuff up. Well, <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, there is uh, on the web, if you, if you look up, there's a bullshit generator, which will automatically generate the bullshit. Right. And it, it's uh, the, the level we see in hundred million dollar projects i guess everybody's using the bullshit generator are as good as you get from the bullshit generator yeah right uh, it yeah. is really at that level huh so so uh you know so you, uh when 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 did you first notice this level of bullshit oh it was you've been around for a while yeah, in this industry yeah. uh, you've seen a few projects yeah yeah, yeah. uh was um, it always like this yeah Always like this, uh, from the 1960s anyway, as far as I remember. So, That's no change. It's, it's a, a deep part of the culture. It, it, everybody knows that politicians bullshit all the time because they don't want to say anything that they can't deliver. So, they can say later, I really meant the following. Okay, so we, we all know that. But the, uh, and and we, we, we live with that. We don't take politicians too seriously. But when managers for corporations and organizations do it, it has serious consequences, like the failure of the organization or the failure of the United Nations to deliver its sustainability goals, which I've been analyzing, which are full of bullshit, I'm afraid, okay? or the failure to understand uh, artificial intelligence transparency. I've just recently analyzed stuff given to the White House and done by top universities about the transparency of artificial intelligence. And it's full of bullshit. And I even have some top people working there who say, we agree with you and we understand it now, Tom. Okay. And then what happens? 
well, we're going to build some fantastic uh, artificial intelligence systems that will be transparent, and uh, they won't be. Nobody will know what they're actually doing. They will probably destroy the human race. And uh, after we're all dead, we'll all, all say, oh, gee, we didn't do transparency well enough. Oh, we're not here. We can't do anything. It's too late. So all over the place, at all levels, really big uh, worldwide projects, corporate-wide projects, and smaller projects. Even in little Norway, we have these huge projects for like health uh, systems and military systems. And I'm really worried because all the health planning for Norway is totally full of bullshit. And guess what? Your country has the same problem. Be afraid. Be very afraid. I, actually, you, you uh, contacted some of these uh, politicians. Oh, yeah. And what's their reaction? Um, we don't need to be clear. They didn't say it that way. They didn't say it so clearly. They just said, we already have stuff happening. They bullshitted about their level yeah. of bullshit. Yeah, absolutely. They didn't say clearly. That absolutely. <laughs> wouldn't even have a discussion. Wouldn't let me present and prove how bad it was. They really don't care. Well, I, I think maybe they would care, but they don't think they need to care. Part of the problem. Okay. So I'm, I'm really afraid. I'm just, you know, don't, don't go near the health system. It's going to kill you okay <laughs> i had a, a, a brother-in-law who's a top medical doctor and he said if you you really want to avoid catching diseases don't enter a hospital right and he probably knew what he was talking about <laughs> yeah. yeah it's a sick house, sick house uh, huh? in, in norwegian it's actually called sykehus it's a it, it's it's literally a sick house that's where you get sick so let's go to the sick house ah, all right well um so uh, as, as many of you know, we have uh, methods and techniques to deal with the bullshit and, and uh, convert it into clear, you know, quantified uh, levels of value and qualities and performance. So everybody understands the same thing. How simple. But you know what? Less than 0.1% of the world cares. So we have some great clients who uh, are very successful in, in business and they understand and they do it and that's all very nice. But if we say, what about the rest of the world? It's you know 99.9% .9 do not care to even have a conversation about it. Why? Well, in simple terms, since everybody's so bad, nobody notices how bad they are. So they all retain their highly paid <laughs> jobs spouting bullshit. So there's a, it's, a, it's a separate job. CBO, Chief Bullshit Officer. Yeah. That's the C-level executive, all of them, I'm afraid. Very few of them have training and culture to know the difference. They often see it when they sit down and we get a chance to point it out to them. Okay, But nobody's pointed it out. They've been living it. They think that's normal. It's expected. You know, you're a manager. You need to spout bullshit like a politician. <laughs> Okay, we will save the world and save the corporation and we'll make everything effective and efficient through digitalization. <laughs> we just had a meeting this morning, which will be very anonymous, but they were a big bank and they were going to digitize. It didn't say the bank was going to get better. It said we're going to digitize, even if it destroys the bank. No, they didn't say that last part, but that's <laughs> probably the consequence. You focus on the technology, the digitization, that's bullshit. The bank needs to get better as a bank. We're going to help them. They've asked for help uh, <coughs> to clarify their critical values. So uh, th there's hope for them, but not for the other banks. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, we, I mean, we've seen companies that uh, take this seriously and become clear in their communication about their top level values and turn the company completely around from being average like everybody else to to kicking ass to, to really, you know, wiping their competitors off the, the chart being so good. So that it, it's an, a tremendous um, competitive advantage, possibility for competitive advantage. It's sitting there, just be clear about what you want to achieve. Uh, and it seems like you can uh, achieve wonders. Uh, if, even uh, a real shit company, that is, at least they made toilets to shit in, they did this, right? They're a startup. Uh, they had, like everybody else, unclear goals and 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 mixing in the the solutions with the ends and the 
And then they, they clarified their thinking, quantified their values, and before you know it, they won a, a million dollars from uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and, uh, and they're to this day doing excellent, right? They're doing fantastic with their... So, but this is a human shit company, not a, a bullshit company. <laughs> right, they don't bullshit, they're human shit. Yeah. But they do it, uh, you know, with a value first way, and it's just fantastic and fun to see how they prosper in, in that. Well, let's there's change actually, the culture from bullshit to human shit. There, there's the actually, shit that humans need to communicate well with each you, other. You might not have seen this, but last I looked on their, their website, uh, they're going on very strong now, further with, uh, you know, they, so they got the million. This is just, a, there was just a three, four, there were like five people, I think, when we worked there, right? They got the million dollars, but now they're in much more money. Also, I think, from the foundation. It's a, the, 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 you didn't mention the name of the company. Luwat. You can check it out. Luwat. Luwat. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. It's not. AT&T. They're not hiding it. They're very. No. They're a fantastic company. But uh, if you go there to their website and look at their blogs, it looks like they're now gonna have even more funding coming their way, like much more than a million dollars. Like but it more. could be that it wasn't our methods that made them good. It's they're such smart people that yeah. they're smart enough to look at our methods. <laughs> that with or without our methods, they might have succeeded. That's a possibility. Yeah. And, and but they, they said it was our methods. Right. And just to be clear, you know, we teach this, but you don't have to use our methods or, you know, you, you just need to be super clear about what you want to achieve. Right. And to do that, because these are variables, uh, we need to quantify it. Now, but, if but there are maybe, other ways of doing that, fantastic. But maybe a lot of people don't want to be clear. It's in their interest to be unclear. For example, if you don't have a clear objective, nobody can ever prove you didn't achieve it. And you can't get fired for failing to do what you promised. And so maybe there's a deep need to obfuscate, it's called, to hide what you really want to do uh, as long as people accept it and keep on paying you. So that could be the problem. It's not that they don't know that they can be clear. They don't want to be clear. So there are many, many politicians. But they wouldn't say it aloud. <laughs> I don't want to be clear. Uh, I want to do anything I want. Uh, and uh, you can never say I've failed because I've never clarified what it means to succeed. Right. But you can't say that aloud. So there are like many politicians in, in that way. There are politicians, but they are, they're, they're project managers or there are some... Politicians are the worst. It's somehow they're actually politicians. Fake news. Yeah. Partly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ah, oh, that's funny. Um, now, uh, there's there's one guy that we uh, really admire that uh, are extremely good at succeeding in projects. Uh, and uh, as far as we know, he doesn't have any influence from us. Probably not, right? Uh, it could be from could one be. angle or two, but but. But uh, not directly. Uh, and that guy is Elon Musk. He is fantastic at uh, succeeding in projects, ref- left, right, and center. It's just amazing what he does. Uh, we both have Tesla cars, of course. I mean, those, those are fantastic and I got cars. Tesla stock, so buy Tesla car, <laughs> then my stock goes up. Yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> then his stocks goes up. Yeah. But um, I, I just saw yesterday, I saw a video. Uh, with Elon, and uh, let's take a look at it, and uh, and and we can comment on it. So now, one thing uh, I've studied uh, Elon Musk. Of course, he's not um, he's not a method teaching guy like we. We teach methods. We teach. It is not he, who he is. He is about succeeding in his projects, his vision, his dreams. Uh, but he's still. Sometimes, uh, you know, have some little insights into how does he manage to succeed. And he has been quite clear about, uh, number one, clear, quantified objectives at the top. No bullshit at the top, right? And he has something about getting really smart people and uh, something about verifying and checking and a few other things. But, you know, uh, having clear, quantified, no bullshit at the top is definitely one of his main babies going forward. Now, this is, uh, uh, his, I found this uh, cl- clip here and, um, and uh, uh, on YouTube, and I'll, I'll show you guys. 
and uh, let's Can't let's wait to see it. Yeah, let's Everything see. Everything Elon is fun. Yeah, and this is sort of project how to succeed in projects related. <laughs> and now right. you've got this. I mean, how do yeah. you how do you do that? Is it just sheer will? Is it um, everyone that driven about the goal? I don't. Know, I think I've I've learned a lot of lessons about how to make things go fast, um, and then I've then uh, um, propagated those lessons to the SpaceX team. And we, there's just like an incredibly talented, hardworking team at SpaceX. Yeah. Um, in fact, at times I think maybe there's too many talented people at SpaceX. We have like, you know, too many talented people that were cornering the market. Like, <laughs> well, um, you know, but there's like it's a very talented group that works super hard. Yeah. And uh, the and and just have t taking the general approach of if 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 a design is taking too long, the design is wrong. Yeah. And the, therefore, the design must be modified right. um, to accelerate progress. Right. Um, uh, one of the most fundamental errors made in advanced development is to stick to a design even when it is very complicated, mm -hmm. um, and to not strive to delete parts and processes. Right. Right. Uh, it's incredibly important. So this is why the, the switch to steel was because the the, the advanced carbon fiber was taking too long. Right. Right. Um, and well, and you're not, you're definitely not a sunk cost fallacist. You're yeah, like, Mr. Not. This is clearly the new path forward, let's hop on it. Yeah, is and it in the future or not? If it's not in the future, who cares? Yeah, yeah, and you did that, I mean, look at last yeah. year, Dear Moon. You guys were kind of in that like awkward stage of probably figuring this out right here. You know, you had the carbon I, I fiber mandrel. I think we mandrel. didn't even have the steel. I think we were still on the path. When, when was the Dear Moon thing? Almost exactly a year ago. That was before the change to, to steel. Yeah, you guys, I mean, you showed the, the carbon mandrel and everything, and you're, yeah. you know, excited about that, but then no, all I, of a sudden, I, we I see switch. I canceled the carbon fiber design uh, in October last year. Yeah, so um, just after that. So, you know, what does it say there? If, if the design takes too long, it is the wrong design. Is that what he said? Yeah. yeah. So, and, and notice, he, he does not have confusion about ends and means. Right, his his ends are so clear mm -hmm. that if the means are not doing the job, he changes them. You change them, and that's part of what we teach at a more advanced level. We call it dynamic design to cost, and it, you are your goals are very clear. And if your feedback in short term says you're not making it, you change right then and there. So he's using exactly the same. But method. what if your if your initiative is called dig, dig, digitize? I can't say the digitization. Dig, digitization. Yeah. Right. Then yeah. what has happened is you have you have turned this around. The this the the means have become the goal. So how do you then say no? We need to switch this. Well, as long as you've got some digits coming out, zero, <laughs> one, two, three, you are succeeding. Yeah. So no matter if the company or <laughs> planet is being destroyed it's crazy right but yeah. that's what we see all the time people are confusing the means with what they're trying to achieve the, the means becomes the project then you can't switch mm -hmm. you can't go from whatever it was carbon to yeah. aluminium was it aluminium uh, steel steel right? right you can't go from from one material to another because the the you're the, stuck, with you're your stuck yeah. because your goal is the means your goals they have to be uh, the end state with, you know, de-linked from the means. Yeah, the results. The results. The ultimate results. All right, let's listen some more. And, and what people don't understand is that you're the lead engineer. You're yes, literally the, literally. This is a, I was actually at dinner with, uh, some, with, a, with a, a friend, and, and he was like, well, who's the chief engineer of SpaceX? I like, it's me. And no, 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 it's like, it's not you. Who, who is it? Like, look, it's either someone with a very low ego, or, I, I don't know, you know, but I do, I, but you know, that said, you know, the, the like, you know, what I actually tell a team is like, everyone is a chief engineer. This is extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that uh, everyone must um, understand how the, broadly speaking, all the systems in the vehicle work. Right. Um, and so that you, you, so you don't have subsystem optimization, because this is naturally what happens. Mm -hmm. You can see the organizational errors um, in the, it, the like the, the the product errors reflect the organizational errors. So, it, like essentially, you'll see that the, that there's an interface at at this like if you go whatever departments you've got that yeah. will that will be where your interfaces are, right? And, and and then instead of like getting rid of something or uh, questioning the constraints, mm -hmm. the one department will design to the constraints of the other that the other department has given them without calling into question those constraints and saying those constraints are wrong. And you, you should actually take the approach 
that the, the, the constraints that you are given are guaranteed to be some degree wrong. Guaranteed to be some degree wrong. Because huh. uh, the, the counterpoint would be that they are perfect. Uh, right, which is never. Uh, um, yeah. As you say, like, what are the, what's the probability that this is the platonic ideal of the perfect part? Right. Zero. Zero. Okay, yeah. basically. Yeah. So you, you could question your constraints. It does not matter if the person handing you those constraints won a Nobel Prize. They are, even Einstein was wrong some of the time. Right. So uh, you question your constraints. This is extremely important. Question your constraints. Now, so what, what, what I hear a lot is, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the requirement comes in as you have to use an Oracle database. I said, wait a second. Is, is that the requirement or is that somebody doing the design and architecture now? So, well, it comes in as a, as a requirement, as an as a, as a end state. And, and then uh, they say, well, that's a, that's a constraint. Now, then if they build that Oracle database into let's say an iphone app and there is a really bad match and everything goes uh slow and the, the 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 system doesn't work very well then who's at fault it's the person who accepted the constraint he it? accepted elon Musk says even if they you know win the nobel prize in the field they're probably wrong right some degree of wrong mm -hmm. so whenever whenever we get uh solutions as an end state, as a requirement, we should question it and say, is this, is this really needed? Can the we simple word, why? Why Oracle database? And the answer will bring you to a higher level of your critical constraints. And you've got to ask, are these things clarified? Are these agreed? That, you know, for example, if the answer is security, you say, fine, that's what you really want. You really want security, but how much security of what type do you want when is the clarification? Yeah. And so a lot of people can say the magic word, uh, it's because of security, and uh, but, but they have not taken the trouble to clarify it, so it becomes a bullshit word, security. How do you quantify it? How much do you have now? Mm -hmm. How much does your competitors have? And how much do you intend to have and when? That's... No bullshit, right? If you can answer those questions, mm. that's what you need to do. Mm. All right. So I, I love how we have. Um, uh, I love how, I love how, how he's so clear about the constraint part and saying, "Hey, these are design constraint, but you need to question them." And that's your, I would say, as a you know, as a professional in product development, that's your responsibility. That's your job. If you're just accepting. Uh, um, these uh, constraints because somebody says so you're not doing your job you're part of why you're failing if you 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 need to challenge them and uh, i would say take the responsibility to the guys who who um who constraints who sets the constraints say okay if that's a constraint you should be responsible for the results of your constraint that you are putting on our project and then quickly you'll find I, I like what yeah. Elon says about everybody in a way is the chief engineer because uh, yeah. everybody has to have the overview of how it all hangs together to avoid sub-optimization. And that means you have to take that responsibility. Ideally, your management should tell you. Uh, they, at, at great corporation customers of ours like Ericsson, they do exactly that. They say, for example, risk is the responsibility of every engineer at all times. It's not a specialization. Okay, so right. they understand that, and, and uh, Musk understands that. Uh, everybody has to be given information, knowledge, clearly, not bullshit, and uh, 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 understand that their, their job is to question everything, which can be wrong, and constructively try to do something about it. The question is, do you have the courage to do that when nobody around you is asking for it? When your project, in fact, will fail, your, your corporation or organization will go out of business, and you'll just say, well, I'll just, I'm a smart guy, I'll get a job some other place, why do I care? I think maybe, is that your attitude? Or are you going to fight like Elon to do the right things right? And like an, an, I think another thing that, like you say, like, what, what are the mistakes that smart engineers make? Um, it, it, like, I think that one of the most, one of the biggest traps for smart engineers is optimizing a, a thing that shouldn't exist. Yeah. So they'll um, just sit there and spin on that thing that's just like, why do we even have this in the first place? We, absolutely. Yeah. So the, because um, when, when you go through 
college, you know, like studying physics and engineering, I study physics. Uh, the, you have to answer the question that the mm. professor gives you. Mm -hmm. You don't get to say, this is the wrong question. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. But in reality, uh, we have far more degrees. When you're in reality, or the, you have all the oh, degrees yeah. of freedom of reality. And so the first thing you should say is, this question is wrong. Yeah. And that's what you said last year. Yeah. I mean, you kind of said, like, it took us a long time to frame the question, even. Because yes. we didn't necessarily know what it was. It took ages it was. to frame the question. Yeah. I mean, it's just like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Douglas Adams, best philosopher ever. Maybe, the, I think, best book in philosophy ever, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, this book is so deep, uh, people don't even understand. Uh, but, like, in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the Earth is a giant computer. Right. And, and, the, and the Earth, uh, it, it comes up with the answer, 42. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and to the question, like, so what's the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Answer is 42. And like, they're like, what the hell? That doesn't make any sense. Right. I was like, oh, you, the really the hard part is the question. The, question. the answer is the easy part. You need a much more powerful computer to tell you what the question is. Right. And this is true. What, at the point at which you can properly frame the question, the answer is comparatively easy. Right, right. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yep. Now, uh, you know, he says you need to spend, the, the difficult part is framing the question, which is clearly, clearly, right? No bullshit. Yeah. Right? So uh, now a, a, a way of framing the questions is having clear objectives. What are we trying to achieve? What are we really trying to achieve? Right? That's really the question. Yep. Right? That's a what, the question we're framing. What all projects are about improving some values. We find no exceptions. You analyze it. Okay. And you have to know the degree to which they're going to be improved. And you have to know exactly what is going to be, what type of security is going to be improved. And you have to know when, like not in a thousand years, but within three months. Okay. All of these things add to clarity. You know, what exactly type of security, uh, what exact degree, what exact date, Okay, and uh, you, you don't have to be an expert at predicting exactly what will happen in the future, but you have to set some goals that will satisfy your organization and help it succeed. And define the difference between success and failure with numbers is a prerequisite. And if you can't do that, you shouldn't start the project and shouldn't waste your time and shouldn't tell anybody you were on the failure team because that means you didn't speak up and say, we're screwing about, we're wasting time, and I'm just sitting here collecting my pay, which I'm afraid too many people do, because they've got to feed your family, right? Now, um, uh, on a side, uh, you know, I'm thinking, what have we done this week? So, among other things, yesterday we went to um, a talk. Yeah. And, uh, you know, reading, we don't, maybe you should leave the, the name of the speaker out. It was... Uh, super nice and had a fantastic uh, ability to speak and be engaging and fun. But um, we, we uh, stumble on some, something we typically do meet a lot. And that is, uh, you know, the abstract of the talk of the keynote was all about what complexity, complexity. architecture, and, yeah. and how then, to avoid complexity. Right. Which, uh, in fact, uh, Musk is very, uh, he was talking about that at the beginning of his talk. Yeah. Simplify, simplify. Yeah, mm. uh, of course. But so, but then we get there. And like I said, the speaker was super pleasant and fun and engaging. But uh, total waste <laughs> of our time. It was all about programming. It's like, so there was nowhere in the talk abstract that, uh, you know, we're talking about everything from, you know, programmer and, and deep code. He was sort of running live code on the stage there. And, and, but he was, uh, first he was giving a lot of opinions, but he was giving no facts. No facts. No numbers. He was giving so-called case studies from his clients, but there were no, uh, no numbers about how well things went or didn't go or anything like that. Just, uh, in other words, it was a whole hour of personal opinions about things that are good and bad. That's Maybe another danger sign. Yeah. Uh, you can't really check such things. Okay, you got to look for uh, facts, you know, like, uh, you know, did, did the reliability go up? Did the security go up by how much and uh, things like that? You got to look for that. Even, even so when the so-called experts talk about their, their methods, uh, one thing is, well, how much uh, did reliability go up or security go up? But they don't even talk about the cost 
I, I didn't hear. Did you hear any mention about cost of what he was doing? Uh, he was into cost more than most people. Right. I didn't hear cost. Okay. But what, I, what, what? Uh, I, I did have, you hear have cost? To, yeah, I have, have to admit he did talk about relative costs of things sometimes. But you, you probably were already bored. Did you hear a number? You, yeah, yeah. You, you were probably already bored and, and <laughs> doing other things. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> on your iPhone. <laughs> no, he, he did that to his credit. The problem is that everybody can quantify a cost. Okay, and so sometimes that's the only thing they quantify is the cost. Cost is very important. It cannot be ignored. But the main purpose of projects are uh, improvements of values and qualities. And we're very bad at quantifying those. Okay, this is the uh, called the balanced scorecard problem, where uh, people in Harvard Business School realize that we're very, very good at quantifying financials and very bad at quantifying product and service qualities. So they invent the balanced scorecard. Unfortunately, they had a, a big uh, failure there because they allowed people to continue using bullshit for the other side of the balanced scorecard. It was, you, know, you, could, you could use words like, you know, enhance the effectiveness and security and get away with it. But, they, but so, so they, they kept this strong tradition of quantifying the money but they didn't do anything about the weak tradition of, of values and qualities. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, balance scorecard is a good example of management failure and management business school failure. To understand that the primary thing to quantify is not the, the financials or the time, which we can all do, and that's, it is important. Uh, well, it's a, it's a sign when they don't even do that, right? That's, like that, that's right. Then it's time to. You're, you're right. That's time, like time and again, <laughs> they don't even bother to ask what it would cost and when it happened. Right. And that's what you're back to. This guy, I, I just said, wow, he's actually talking about costs. That's so good. That's good. But you, you fallen asleep by that. I was. So, I was sorry off. about that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's the first time. But then, of course, uh, that's clearly not enough. Then you need to go to what really matters. That's right. How much improvements are we going to give to who's what the stakeholders? Critical values, we yeah. call them. Yeah. The things that decide your success and failure in your projects. That's they what we call it value first. Need to be quantified. Right? Yep. We, we have this little slogan, value first. You know, whatever you should do, it's first, it's about creating value to your stakeholders, to your systems. Uh, and then second, we have all kinds of other techniques and methods you need to use. You've got to know the value for money, the cost effectiveness, the efficiency. That's important too. So you bring in the costs, both the upfront costs, and a lot of people completely forget the bigger costs, the life cycle, uh, you know, maintenance cost and, and uh, annual costs. So uh, you need to bring in different kinds of costs and different uh, different cost notions, uh, time, people, money, not just money. Okay. Right. So, uh, but still they're, they're very important as a background to get these values. What's it going to cost? Okay. What is the lowest cost way of getting the values? Okay. So you need to bring in the cost, but you, you can't have a, 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 a culture like the management culture, the quality, quality function deployment is an engineering culture like this and uh, uh, balance scorecard is a management culture like that, which uh, uh, quantifies what is easy to quantify and fails to quantify the, your critical success and failure values. So uh, talking about bullshitting in projects, what has Agile brought to the table for improving this situation? Oh, lots more bullshit. <laughs> it's exactly. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, now the, the, uh, Agile, however, has an excuse. Things like Scrum, they are a framework. What does that mean? Well, it it, it, it means that uh, we're not telling you all the things you need to do to succeed or fail. We're just giving you a framework. And if you want to succeed, you've got to put things in the framework like our methods. Well, that's not people. That's not what people do. They do user no. stories. Yeah, user stories, which typically are very unquantified, very unclear and often very much allowing the amateur user to design when maybe a professional security professional should do the designing. So you're going to get a pin code from somebody's uh, credit card as a security design uh, rather than some advanced artificial intelligence analysis, which they don't understand. 
and they're mixing ends and the means in the very user story. Yeah, right? it's by yeah. design. The user story is pretty chaotic. It's solution oriented. I've, I've it's written about it recently, and I tried to be nice because uh, <laughs> some of my friends have invented user stories. Try to be nice. Uh, I said uh, uh, for a really simple, small project, you know, like one week. User story is fine. Yeah, In yeah. fact, it's great. Right. Okay. But the problem is we're doing things like uh, United Nations sustainability goals for 15 years for the whole planet projects, which, which I've been, uh, I've written a book called S S Sustainability, uh, um, no, values, no, sustainability planning, right, re recently, just to, and, and analyzed all those goals. And it's, it's, it's totally chaotic, totally bullshit. And I'm waiting to find somebody at the other end, you know, like United Nations planning this one and say, you mean we're, we're not going to reach all our goals? And Grant is going to get very, very, very angry. You're screwing us about. Uh, I probably have to get to Greta Thunberg and talk with her about this. Maybe she will say, you're not clear about the climate goals. You're bullshitting us all. And I'm really angry. You know, there's been one kind of clear thing quantified about the climate. And that's the CO2 levels. Yep. And now, obviously, in the climate challenge, there are so many other things than the CO2, which are going to screw us over. Yeah, yeah. But that's been quantified, you know, with Al Gore and the guys pushing that. So, but notice how effective that has been because it has been quantified. It's something that everybody could grasp and measure and say, we're at this level and we're, we're releasing this much CO2. So it's become very, very powerful. Uh, but like the pollution in the ocean, plastic levels, we hear about it, but have we quantified it? Mm. What percentage of plastics can a whale eat without dying? <laughs> yeah. So it's not quantified My yet. My heart goes out to these whales and dolphins. We are really nasty. And if, if we should have a whale who stands up like Greta Thunberg and says, <laughs> or something like that. Something like that. Plastic level's too high. Yeah. And, and of course, uh, uh, it's going to come back to us. So, of course, yeah, the, the whales are suffering. The whole uh, ocean is suffering. But we're not alone. I mean, yeah, we can maybe escape with Elon Musk to, to Mars. But basically, we're all in this together with those guys. So when they start to suffer, we will start to suffer. But, um, uh, okay, I, I, I was going to show you something. Um we have uh, uh, this Val plan. I'm not going to get into Val plan now. It's a tool for, for doing this, clarifying everything. But we just got this uh, yesterday. We got this uh, really neat improvement I want to show you. So, uh, yeah, so here we have uh, uh, actually it's our own planning of Val plan. So we're, we're quantifying the values of how easy it's going to be to be a user, etc., user journeys and reliability and those things and and then we have um the value decision table where we have a, made a clear distinction between what we want to achieve over there and the solutions on top here but the, we've had this uh, a long time but what you haven't seen which i want to show yeah. you yeah. is uh in the in the sidebar here we get information about uh if 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 you do this solution what's the impact over on this journey dot spec uh, value but now what we can do the new thing i just wanted to show you is uh you know how would you go about learning more about what this value is it's a, little, a lot of text crammed in there a lot of details are, are lost and before you had to click on this little eye and it would pop out of the table render that uh, value specification and you could read it and then you had to go back now what you can do is you can simply just click on it and it shows right here so you have the scale and the meter and the status and the goals and the everything right here. And the same thing if you want to, okay, but what was this canvas? You can't even read the whole name there, right? Canvas specification. So again, before you had to click and now just you click and the, the details of that specification comes up right there. So it's so much easier to work like, like this table. We have some 26 solution ideas. Um, that we're evaluating, seeing, okay, which one should we uh, implement to make the best improvements on the values mm -hmm. for our Val plan? Now, notice this is a kind of a spreadsheet, and spreadsheets are traditionally used for financials. Yeah. We're using it for qualities and values. 
because we're quantifying. Makeup managers. Because, va- because financials are normally quantified, like always, right? Mm. So now what happens is once we start uh, quantifying what we are all about mm. in projects, creating value to stakeholders, then we can use some of the similar tools to the, to the finance uh, yeah, world. Yeah. So yeah, but isn't that great? Isn't that a great uh, enhancement to the value decision tables? Say yes. Yes. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. You can just, I mean, I've been struggling when I made, even when I made this table, I didn't have this, uh, this um, solution. And so I would have to go back and forth, back and forth to evaluate all of the, oh, what was that solution again? Now I can just click right in there and, uh, and, and read and, and then do the evaluation. It's so much quicker. So, so just we're wanted to show you to that. make it easy to be clear about a whole lot of things in the complex system, which is what Elon Musk is talking about, to get an overview of the whole system. All right, so uh, I think uh, that's... Do you have any other bullshit on your mind? A lot of it. Well, what? We have time. Well, if anybody's interested in sustainability and they request a copy of my new book manuscript, uh, Sustainability Planning, I'll send it to you if you're serious. Actually, Tom, um, mm-hmm. so you, you, you're talking about those EU... No, the... Um, the United Nations, United Nations sustainability goals, plan. Or yeah. like they're called sustain- 18 or something. There are, uh, yeah, about, a, 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 about something 18, like yeah. that. Uh, okay, sustainability so, goals. So, what I was going to say is, I have, um, uh, I met this uh, lady, she lives in New York, mm-hmm. and uh, she is working with those. Mm-hmm. And uh, we actually agreed that send a copy to her. Yeah, exactly. But I, we agreed that we we're going to have some dialogue, and mm-hmm. I, I was going to help her quantify those values. And she's she's tied into the United Nations. Yeah. Um, and she was going to contact me when she got to New York. And time has gone and she didn't contact okay. me yet. Well, it's not that. But uh, I'll, I'll give you her contact and you can send that yeah. uh, book to her. And we we want to save the, the world, work. but the world has to be clearly saved as opposed <laughs> to bullshit saved, which won't work. All right. So thank you very much. We will hold uh, more of these podcasts. This is the first one. We try to get funnier and and more sarcastic as we go along. And we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Take care and make sure you put value first. Quantified. And no bullshit. Ever. (laughs) Bye.